Alright everyone, today we're going to be learning about friction. Uh, friction is a force that tries to prevent two surfaces from sliding to one another. And there are two primary types, static friction and kinetic friction. So static friction, surfaces do not slide right to one another, lacking movement, action, or change. Kinetic friction, sur surfaces do slide relative to one another, or of or relating to or resulting from motion. So kinetic friction, I just like to think of like, you know, rubbing, sliding against each other. But static friction, I like to think of things kind of being in place, they're not sliding at all. I think the key word is sliding. Okay, what are frictional forces dependent on? Uh, they're dependent on two things. They're dependent on the normal force, so how much contact they have with the ground, and their coefficient of friction, so how rough the two surfaces are that are rubbing against each other, or that are against each other. Okay, it does not depend on surface area. Okay, and we call this coefficient of friction mu. All right, let's move on. All right, let's look at this first example, example six. You push a 500 Newton box across of level four. In order to get the box to move, you have to pull with 230 Newtons horizontal force. However, once this crate starts to move, you can keep it moving at a constant velocity with 200 Newtons, where the coefficient is static friction and kinetic friction. All right, first, I'm just gonna draw the general free body diagram at a point. So we have force of gravity, force normal, force applied, and a force of friction. First of all, what we should know, so this is 500 Newtons, and since nothing is getting applied that me, uh, in the y direction, that means this normal force is also gonna be 500 Newtons. Next thing we know is this block doesn't move until 230 Newtons. So that means the force of friction static is gonna be equal to 230 Newtons because it won't move until it reaches that threshold and then it's gonna to start to move. So now we know that static friction has a maximum of 230 Newtons. So we, can, we know force of friction static is equal to mu times normal force. So we know that the maximum threshold of the force of friction static is equal to 230 and the mu, that's what we're looking for, the coefficient of static friction, it uh, times the normal force 500. So let's do a little bit of calculations, and we find that the mu static, mu static is equal to 230 divided by 500, which is 0.46. Okay. Now we're going to find what the mu kinetic is. So we know that when, now when we apply a force of 200 Newtons, we can get this block to move at a constant velocity. So this block, oops, kinda did too much, but we know that when it's going with constant velocity, it only needs 200 Newtons of force to keep it moving. And the key thing here is to know that when something is in motion, then it's easier to keep it moving. So it's hard to get it to start moving, but once it's in motion, it's easy to keep going. So force of friction connect is weaker than force of friction static. And we know force of friction connect is equal to mu k fn. So since um, the, they're the only force in the x direction, they have to equal each other since it's moving with constant velocity. So we know that force of friction kinetic is equal to 200. Mu kinetic, that's what we're looking for. And force normal is still 500. So now we can find mu kinetic or the coefficient of friction kinetic, 200 divided by 500. And just know this mu kinetic is almost never more than one. So, and there are no units for this as well. And we can see it's less than the static friction. Okay, part B now says, what is the frictional force if you pull with 50 Newtons of force? So now let's say, okay, so same free body diagram here. Force of gravity, 500. Force normal, 500. Now, if we try to push this box with a force applied of 50 Newtons, what we should know is there's, there's going to be static friction that's going to counteract that. So the force of friction static is now going to equal 50 Newtons, preventing it from moving, okay? It can't still be 230 or else this free diagram will show it moving to the left. And friction doesn't move anything. It just prevents things from moving or slows it down. So what we have is the force of friction static is going to match whatever it's getting pulled at. So the answer is force of friction is equal to 50 newtons. All right. Okay, moving on. A disc is launched with a speed of 5.8 meters per second 
if the coefficient of kinetic friction between a disc and the co concrete is 0 0.31, how far does the disc go before it comes to a stop? Okay, so let's again kind of draw this out. Not the best drawing, but let's do that one more time. Draw it out. All right, good enough. So we have this disc here, force of gravity, then we have force normal, then we have force of friction, it's sliding, so we're going to call it kinetic, and I think that's it. Uh, then we want to know how far it goes before it stops. Okay, so a few things we should know here. We should know that we don't know what the mass is, so we know that this force of gravity is equal to mass times 10, gravity being 10, and this force normal is also equal to mass times 10. Next thing we should know is that we don't know what the normal force is. Uh, force of friction is equal to normal force times coefficient of friction. So normal force is equal to mass times 10 uh, times the coefficient of friction, which is 0 0.31, 0 0.31. Okay. So a lot of times with these Newton's problem, we have to use, uh, we have to try to find acceleration. Okay, so we're going to do that. We know it's accelerating in the x direction because in the y direction, everything is just canceled out. So sum of all forces in the x equals mass times acceleration in the x. And we only have one force in x, the so force of friction. Okay, and you might think, oh, it's launched. But actually, while it's moving to the right, nothing is pushing it. Okay, the only force acting on it while it's moving is friction. So nothing's pushing it while it's getting moved to the right. Okay, so that's why we only have friction. So we're going to have force of friction that's going to the left is equal to mass times acceleration. Force of friction is equal to negative mass times 10 times 0.31. Mass we don't know, and acceleration. However, the great thing is the mass cancels out, and then we get acceleration is equal to negative uh, 3.1 meters per second squared. Now we could use information of kin kinematics to find how far does the disk go. So we know displace. we're looking for displacement. We know that the acceleration is equal to negative 3.1 meters per second squared. We know it initially has a speed of 5.8 meters per second, and we know that it comes to a stop. The final velocity is equal to zero. So I'm going to use this formula. Final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus 2a change in x. Zero is equal to 5.8 squared plus 2 a negative 3.1 times displacement. I'm going to do a little bit of algebra. 5.8 squared divided by 6.2. Uh, and then we get 5.43 meters. Okay. Hopefully the algebra is fine for you guys. Okay. Moving on. You drag a crate with a rope that has a mass of 10 kilograms across the floor at an angle of 40 degrees. You pull on the rope with a force of 45 newtons. If the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.21, what is A, the normal force, B, the magnitude of the friction, a force of friction, and C, the acceleration of the crate? Okay, so kind of a more difficult problem because we have an angle in here. But let's try to draw this out. We have a crate, force of gravity. 10 times 10, 100 newtons. Force applied, uh, 45 newtons. Let's see, this angle is what, 40 degrees. And then we don't know what the normal force is. Force normal. And we know there's also friction as it's getting dragged. Force of friction kinetic. Okay. First, what I highly recommend is when you're doing problems like this, where there are angles, what I recommend is many times you're going to want to find out what the components are. So what is force applied in the x direction? And what is force applied in the y direction? So let's figure that out. Force applied in the x direction is going to be 45 times cosine of 40, which is 34.5. And force applied in the y is 45 times sine of 40, which is going to be 28.9. Okay. 
Okay, next, we're looking for the normal force. And what we should know about the normal force is that it's in the y direction. So let's do the sum of all forces in the y is equal to mass times acceleration in the y. And let's look at all the forces in the y. We have force applied in the y, we have force normal, and we have force of gravity. And this is all going to be equal to the mass of the crate times acceleration of the crate in the y direction. Force applied in the y, 28.9. Force normal, we don't know, that's what we're looking for. Force of gravity is going to be negative 100. Mass of the cart, 10. And we should know that it's not, the crate is not moving in the y direction, so this is just 0. Now we do a little bit of math, and we get 100 minus 28.9, and we get 71.1 newtons. Okay. All right, part B, what is the force of friction? Okay, so let's look at this. Part B, force of friction. Well, now that we got the normal force, that's kind of the hard part. We know the force of friction is going to be normal force times the coefficient of friction. So normal force, we found that, 71.1. And coefficient of friction is given to us, 0 0.21. Uh, so this is going to be equal to 71.1 times 0.21. 14.9 newtons. Okay. Last question, the acceleration of the crate. Okay, so we should know that this cart isn't going to be accelerating in the y direction. We, As we said, it's not moving. However, it is going to be accelerating in the x direction. So let's look at everything in the x. Sum of all forces in the x equals mass times acceleration of x. And we have two forces in the x, force applied in the x and force of friction. The force applied in the x plus force of friction is equal to mass of the cart times acceleration of the cart in the x direction. Force applied is equal to, in the x is 34.5. Force of friction is 14.9, but it, it's going left, so I'm going to put negative 14.9. Mass of the cart is going to be 10. And acceleration, uh, that's what we're looking for. So let's do a little bit of math. 34.5 minus 14.9. Divided by 10, 1.96 meters per second squared. Yeah. I hope that made sense to all of you guys. Okay, and uh, that's it for friction. Uh, next time we'll be talking about inclined planes, which can be quite intimidating, but I'll be showing a good trick to help you guys figure out how to do inclined plane problems. Thanks for watching.